Oops. Okay. Oh. Um, Hello, nice. hello, hello, and welcome everybody uh, to back from our hiatus of Astro Live. I was on a vacation then at reInvent, so it's good to be back. And I'm really excited to be back for this particular week because we have quite a special Astro Live. Um, and that is because we have my two friends, uh, Farhan Fernandez and Ju Sung Beek, uh, over here from the Chart Boost team. And they are here to talk about how they are using Airflow plugins uh, to customize Airflow and extend it uh, for their particular use cases. Um, so really excited to have them talk about all this. And without further ado, I will kind of shut up and let them take it away, demo how they're using Airflow plugins. And uh, yeah, good. take it away, y'all. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, good morning or evening, everyone, depending on <laughs> where you are. Uh, as George said, my name is Ferran Fernandez. I'm the data engineering manager here at Charles Barcelona. Uh, I mean, in a few minutes, you will also meet Beck, who is also part of the data engineering team working from Madrid. So we are kind of like all over the place. Um, so after I guess this short introduction, I guess we can jump to, to business and explain like the reason why we are here today, which is to explore uh, the dynamic world of um, Apache uh, Airflow plugins. <clears throat> so here at Charboost, Airflow is like our, well, trusted companion, so to speak, <laughs> providing a robust and flexible platform for workflow automation. Um, however, the true magic lies in the ability to enhance and customize uh, Airflow's uh, capabilities throughout plugins. Um, so the, the plugins are a modular and extensible way to add new features on top of uh, the elements that Airflow already has, uh, like new integrations or functionalities. Uh, um, and I guess... Um, one of the main reasons why uh, this matters is that you can think about this as having an app store <laughs> extension for your Airflow platform. Um, so as I said, one of the three main points of, of using plugins is to extend the Airflow capabilities, uh, allow new operators, hooks, sensors, for instance, integrate with external systems and maybe even enhance data pipeline efficiency. Um, so for this talk in particular, we are going to expand on the Airflow UI plugins uh, that are usually the ones that are not that well known or perhaps from our perspective or from what we have seen, uh, they are not that well documented or well, not very explained. Um, so without further ado, I guess we can jump to Beck, who's going to start and kick us off. Beck, do you want to go? Sure. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Farah. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Beck. I'm also a data engineer at Chartboost. Um, today, I'd like to show you guys how to implement Airflow plugins. Um, may I share my screen? Yes, please do. Yeah, go for it. I hope everyone can see my screen. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. All right, thanks. So the Airflow documentation pretty much covers everything you need to know. And honestly, that's all I needed to build plugins as well. Um, especially for those who have previously developed applications with Flask, diving into Airflow plugin implementation won't be uh, too challenging. Uh, so now let me break down how to set up simple Airflow plugins. Um, for this demo, I'm going to use uh, Google Cloud Platform. So first things first, let's create a Python file. Okay, so um, yeah, let's start with the core classes for the Airflow plugin. Um, firstly, I have to create a class that inherits from the Airflow plugin to define the plugin. And Flask Blueprint is a way of organizing a collection of related views and other code. Flask App Builder is a development framework um, built on top of Flask. So once necessary classes are imported, the next step involves creating a Flask App Builder base view. 
So here um, I used uh, expose decorator for URL routing methods and then move on to the test function. I mean, in case uh, you may be confused, I meant this function. There's like no like test function, but I just named this function as a test. But uh, if you want to change the name, um, it's okay. You can change the name. So, but anyway, it was created. This function was created to return templates using render template. And this render template is a Flask function to generate output from a template file. In this example, demo.html is the template file. And then the third step is to create a Flask blueprint to integrate the templates and static folder. So as you can see, you can see the template folder name and then static folder name here. And the fourth step involves defining the app builder view and then creating an app builder menu item so the plugins page will be displayed at the top of the Airflow UI. And lastly, define the plugin class with all information we have. So now the Python file is ready. So let me show you my uh, demo.html file. So I won't go, to, go into too much details on how the HTML file works and everything, but the most important part of the, this HTML file is the template extending part. So your Airflow plugin is still within the Airflow UI, but on a different page. So now we have a Python file and HTML file. So it's already, so once the Python file and HTML file is already, uh, we should place the Python file into Airflow home slash plugins folder, which is I'm going to show you right now. So this is the Airflow home directory, and then they always have plugins folder here. Click plugins. This is the Python file we have. Um, okay, so one successfully uploaded, and then now uh, we're gonna drop the HTML file inside of a templates folder. Okay, so everything is ready. And now we go to the Airflow UI and then let's refresh the Airflow UI. So the plugin page should be updated. And then let's check the plugins. In this case, test plugin and test view. Um, in case if you don't see any changes in the Airflow UI or uh, find some errors in the log, you should check if your account was registered as admin or uh, that normally uh, solves the issue. So I have created a simple template file, uh, including a table, a form to add more rows to the table and a checkbox and a progress bar and buttons. Um, as you can see, when the page was loaded, you may notice that the progress bar was initialized. Above the progress bar, there's a table uh, providing information or usernames, cities and gaming consoles. I love the choice of gaming consoles. This is, reveals a lot about your team. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and you can also interact with the uh, form to add more people. Uh, for example, let's say uh, my buddy uh, Ernesto, um, who lives in Brooklyn, uh, let's say he likes to play uh, EA Sports FC24 uh, with his PlayStation 5. Um, just in case EA Sports FC is the new name for FIFA. Uh, I confirm with my wife who used to work in electronic arts, so this is correct <laughs> information. So yeah, let me add his information here. So Brooklyn PlayStation 5. Oh, actually I made a mistake his name, but yeah, let me just click this reset and then I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so now I have every information I, I need. And also let's say he already agree with me about the privacy policy. So I'm gonna click this one. So check this box and then submit it now. So now you can see the new role, Ernesto Brooklyn PlayStation 5. So. Now his name, his city, his console information are updated on the table. 
Um, so with the Airflow plugins, uh, we can create interactive user interfaces uh, using modern web stacks uh, such as like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, the primary benefit of using Airflow plugins is the ability to customize them for any project. Um, so now let's move on to Ferran. He will walk you through our Chartboost Data Teams example of how we leverage the Airflow plugins. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, what Beck has shown here is like a mock-up of things that can be done, of course. It's not that we <laughs> have any real plugin that has employees and the consoles they played, although, well, that might be a cool feature to have. But as he has showcased, uh, you can maybe connect that to, uh, as if it was a backend to whatever database, for instance, and have a UI. So we use this, for instance, as Beck is showing at the moment, to monitor our long running big query queries. At the moment, we, we don't have any, but it should show there. It has the auto refresh button there. So let's say because of whatever reason, we start seeing a spike in the number of BigQuery queries running at the moment that, they, that take like longer than expected. It's not that we have to <clears throat> jump around different uh, UIs, right? We are data engineers and our favorite UI is the Airflow UI. So we want to have every single thing in the same place so we don't have to jump around. So why not to have this here and don't go to the BigQuery UI? Perhaps this is one potential use case that could be beneficial. Although it's a bit like abstract from the DAC uh, point of view, we have other examples that are closer to DACs. For instance, if you back go to the Datadog plugin, um, we have uh, the, the name of the DACs are obfuscated here, but um, of course, we don't have DAX that are called DAX one, DAX two, that DAX three. <laughs> like we really? have many... that's such a nice, easy way to organize your DAX. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, why not? <laughs> it sounds like an incremental. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the good thing about this is that uh, we we have a programmatic way of using Datadog. For for those of you that are not familiar with Datadog, it's like a monitoring tool, uh, and it has, of course, an API to communicate with that and. We have a library, so to speak, that uh, sends beacon messages from the DAX to Datadog. So whenever this plugin comes into action, well, better said, when we go to this plugin to see which DAGs are available, it, it checks the DAG back and checks which DAGs have that library on it. So we know which ones can communicate with Datadog. And then we can automatically set up Datadog alerts on those DAGs, just hitting a button. So it reduces the human error of creating that monitor manually on the Datadog UI. And you can just do it from here. Um, and even if you, of course, want to add an extra layer of you know annoying things, you can add <laughs> pager duty on top so you can I don't know, get a beautiful notification at 3 a.m. in the morning or something like that. Yeah, you guys are really making the UI much more colorful. It's it's awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and of course, it shows like the ones that have active monitors or not, depending on the importance of the DAG. Perhaps you don't want to have monitors on every single DAG. You might, you may or may not want that. That's that's totally fair. Um so yeah, the with of course, these are the two examples we we can show uh, at, at the moment that are uh, okay, but we do have others, as you can see on the top bar that we also use on a daily basis. And yeah, that's pretty much what we had prepared for today. So I guess uh, we won't have much questions since we don't have many participants, but like, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Do we get any questions? No, we didn't, but we are killing it on views um got over five so concurrent nice. <laughs> um but yeah like i said yeah we'll have a lot of people uh, after and i will make sure i filter any comments i get um from them over you but really appreciate it both of you coming on making the time and setting up this really cool demo environment i i just love this um, and i like had the idea of just having like a single ui where you're bringing a data dog have pager duty you know you can get annoyed from many different angles, um, all in the yeah. same location. So hats off to y'all. Um, 
And yeah, that's uh, that's it. So we can close it up and I will end the broadcast right now. Okay. And